Hey guys, this is Mike Cornell. Um, I wanted to, I'm in Mexico. I've been in Mexico. I'm going to be here for the next two weeks. This looks horrible. One sec, guys. See, this is live. This is a real video. Let's see if this one's better. This one doesn't creep. Okay, cool. So let's move. This is real light. Okay. <laughs> So, um, just an update. I'm in Mexico now, and um, been here for the next two weeks. I was in Panama for two weeks, and me and my girl were just there hanging out, having a good time, and pretty much just enjoying Panama City. So, and when I say Panama, I mean Panama, the country. So, we went to the capital. Beautiful place. Love Panama. Thinking about living there for a couple months, maybe, maybe six Maybe after Mexico, because I'm going to be here for six months after I come back from Europe. But anyways, long story short is um, that's that. So that's just the latest update for me. So on this video, I wanted to talk about when should you, when should you actually leave a an opportunity, right? When, when, when should you do that? For many years of my life, actually in real estate, I had so much pride, you know, that I had to be successful in this industry. I had to, you know, I had to make sure that I was the best in my area and la la la, right? I had so much pride. And though I learned a lot, like I, I really credit most of my major skills from real estate. So it wasn't a total bust, um, but um, I operated strictly from pride and I became moderately successful in real estate. And I say that all the time on this, on this, um, on YouTube, you know, I, I became moderately successful with wholesaling. I was a real estate agent and um, you know, I like to manage Airbnbs. So those three things is what I did. And um, so, yeah, I operated out of pride when I was doing that business. I said, I'm not going to fail. I got people looking at me. People know me as this guy, la, 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 right? All that chatter in my head. So let's talk about when is it a good time to actually uh, leave an opportunity if you're not seeing results. I would say there's one thing. So I'm going to just suggest one thing. And then I'm going to suggest that. And then I'm going to talk about uh, an instance in my life that recently happened that I stopped pursuing this certain opportunity. And I'll tell you exactly why. So the first thing. Um, just a general rule I would say is if you are doing a certain industry, you have to know what the expected time that you're going to spend in that industry before you become successful. So like real estate, like you don't really become successful until your third year. That's like when you start to really catch stride. So you got to understand the <clears throat> amount of time you need to become successful because it's not going to be overnight which a lot of people quit after one year, two years, three years. So I would say knowing that, knowing the length of time that you're going to need to spend is very important. So you got to have that all planned out in the beginning. Um, and I think, you know, that's pretty much it. So you need to know the time, right? If you've gone past that time and you're way over that time, um, then you need to think about something else. I mean, because if you haven't been successful in the, the, the amount of time that people suggest, like maybe one, two or three years, then you're doing something absolutely wrong. And um, you can't just be operating off of strictly pride, like I used to. And, um, you know, some people may disagree with me, but, you know, I just don't think, 
I have a new mindset when it comes to opportunities. Like I said, um, you need to be in something that really, um, that really matches your skill set. I think that's where you can find something. And it might take time to actually find the skill set of what you're actually good at or what you want to do, what you want to be like copywriter. You want to be high ticket sales closer. You want to do sales. You want to do sales manager. Like, what do you want to do? Like, you need to find out what you're naturally good at. And then you got to kind of like put yourself in that environment and get better and better and better and better. Right. So <clears throat> that's one thing to really, how to really think about an opportunity. So we went over if you've been in an industry for too long and you haven't found success, uh, that's a clear indicator to me. That's a very clear indicator because my, my new mindset is that <clears throat> you should find success pretty fast. If you, if you ask me, because <clears throat> if your skill sets really, uh, match the industry, then, you know, it should be like a match made in heaven. So <clears throat> I think that you're, uh, you should find something kind of like that naturally fits you. It's like a, something that's just natural and it feels, I don't know how it feels right. And you're getting results and you're becoming good at it. So like, those are things that you need to like really watch out for. Cause really that's my mindset when it comes to business in general. It's like, if I'm not very successful in the first year or two, then I would like to say that that business isn't for me. Now, when I started the DTS business, um, it was a match made in heaven. I literally knew that I was going to become very successful with this business from the first day, <clears throat> from the first day I started it. And I was like, Everything I've learned up to this point matched what I'm about to do. And yeah, now, you know, I'm doing things like other creators on YouTube aren't doing. You know, I've been traveling for three years and I know that's, <clears throat> I always say that in videos, but I think it's a, like something literally to like talk about because I've literally went through every single problem there is from and while traveling, so traveling to other countries. So I've done it all. I've gotten, you know, PayPal shut down, systems shut down, just like anything you think of. I've got, it's happened to me. Like, um, so, um, you know, I've faced everything. Okay. So, um, it's a, it was a match made in heaven from the beginning. That was... That was my whole thing. It was just a complete match made in heaven. And I got, I would say the first three months was rocky. But for some reason, I just always knew that this is going to catch on. I've seen other people be pretty successful. I've talked to other people. And I know this is going to be a gold mine once I get it done, right? The first three months, I got like little to no results. But the second three months is where I really picked up stride. And then, um, after the, the, the first six months, I kind of like, you know, I did pretty, pretty good enough to where I was like, okay, I'm making pretty good. I'm making decent money. And, you know, at that point I was like, you know, I'm going to invest my money into wholesaling and marketing. Right. So that was my original plan. The second six months I got obsessed with making a certain amount of money per day. It was like 400, 500 dollars a day. And I did that. And it was almost like I just I just had everything that I had learned up to that point, my the opportunity just like presented itself very magically. And I knew that this industry was for me. So the second six months, I figured out how to do this online. And after that, uh, after that second six months, that's when I started to travel and started to really, um, you know, 
challenge myself. And I, I hired two virtual assistants to help me manage my business at that point. So when I went to Peru, my first trip, I said, yo, this is, I am going to do this business from another country and I am going to face every single problem while I'm out of the country and I'm going to get it done. And the way I'm going to run this business is by managing communication from a phone and a computer and I'm going to get it all done. And I'm going to make it happen. That was my mindset then. And obviously I did. And I've been traveling for very, very close to three years. It's coming on. It's coming up on um, January 19th. So I've been traveling for three years. Uh, very, very soon. And um, I say all that to say that um, opportunities should really uh, be... I'm not going to say second nature, but something that you kind of like and that you're good at and that you can get results with pretty fast, right? And then if you're not getting results fast enough, then you need to choose a different opportunity that applies with your skill sets. <clears throat> now I'm going to talk about what happened to me recently last year. Um, when it comes to this exact topic, when is it okay to let go of an, an old opportunity? When is it like, when should I stop trying? So I did the pallet game, right? And I was getting to the point where I was making three to $400 a day and I got there pretty fast. It was pretty remarkable and I was surprised myself, but it was just something I was trying, right? And I hired a team of virtual assistants to <clears throat> do scripts, help me do pickups, help me find suppliers and just stuff like that, right? Like that was my whole thing, right? And I got to the point where I was comfortably making like three to $400 a day. And uh, I was picking up the pallets. I was doing all the, I was doing all that, right? And to me, it was a challenge. At that time, it was a challenge. I needed a challenge, right? But what happened though, because that was like a hobby business for me, what happened was, I had to choose between pallets, pallets and DTS, my business, right? At that point, I think I had like at least 10 virtual assistants just running my business for me. And, you know, we were growing every single day. We have been growing every single day from the beginning. <clears throat> we're at 25 plus virtual assistants. And we've been growing every single day from that day. But what happened was... I found a new incredible opportunity within the DTS business that I never had before. And I had to choose. I said, do I chase $300, $400 a day and completely wreck myself every day? <clears throat> but constantly, you know, we were constantly getting better. Do I do that or I just do I go for thousands of thousands of dollars a day easily? Do I put my time into that? What do I do? <clears throat> so, you know, obviously I chose DTS and I chose a life that I actually wanted to do, which was travel and build my business, and that's what I did. And actually from there we literally have quadrupled in size. <clears throat> and um, now my mindset is like, you know, I'm building a virtual assistant agency and um, I'm also, you know, I've created <clears throat> other departments inside of my business that have really helped us quadru we've quadrupled in size in the last I want to say four months, five months. <clears throat> no, six months. We've quadrupled the size in the last six months. And it's because when I made that decision, I had to, I had to say, do I, do I, do, do, do I let my pride run me 
and keep doing this business because I said, you know, I was going to make it big. Now, keep in mind, I want to tell you something. I absolutely believe that the pallet business is highly scalable. And I think it's a phenomenal business in general. I just think like, um, it's a phenomenal business. It really is. It's very scalable. If this is your first business and you want to scale it, I think it's a good business to do. But I would say, um, one, I really don't like hiring people in the United States. So when I was hiring people to pick up my pallets, it just didn't work out. Like it just, <clears throat> it didn't work out with multiple people. So um, I would say if this is your first business and it's like you're used to the blue collar workers, I would say go for it. Go do that because you talk to those people, you know that demographic. You've been in, you know, maybe you've worked in a warehouse before or you like know those kind of people. I would say I know more like sales people and more um, real estate people and those kind of like manager type people versus the blue collar guys. So nothing against them. But I would say, you know, if you if you want to get your hands dirty, the pallet business is a great business to get your hands dirty become good at and it's highly scalable if you have virtual assistants and I actually have a course I made exactly on how I did it to actually and we did it in a very short amount of time <clears throat> you know I have a course on how you know I have virtual assistants hold on one second how we had a multiple assistants, virtual assistants calling the scripts they use for each company, <clears throat> how to get suppliers, how to get uh, pallets, how to get pallet pickups. Um, and then, you know, uh, how to find uh, the, the yards in your local area and get pricey, stuff like that. Very simple to do. But the way that I was able to make that business grow faster was because I used virtual assistants to do calls for me for different things. And then they did customer service. My phone was always answered in that business. And that's why we were able to do what we did. And my phone was always calling out and trying to find new leads. So I had a machine, I built a machine, right? And like I said, if I would have kept doing that business for a while, I probably would have, you know, made it really, really big. But at the time, like I said, I had to choose, am I going to choose DTS, which I've known and is my bread and butter? Am I going to choose $400 or am I going to choose $400 a day? Or am I going to choose thousands of dollars a day easily? Which one? And it obviously it was an easy decision. I was like, you know, fuck my pride. I'm going to go live in Mexico. I'm going to go live around the whole world again like I was doing. And... I'm going to follow this new opportunity. And like I said, we've quadrupled in size and we're doing so much better than we have before. So I say all that to say, okay, what is the main point of all this? Pride. Sometimes as um, entrepreneurs, we like just operate off of pride. We, we say, yo, I'm going to be successful. You know, I got to be successful in this. I got to do this. But if it's been an amount of time where you haven't hit that success, you got to start looking at like, what are you doing wrong? And why is it taking you this long? And, and then, you know, you got to give up your pride. Maybe there's something else out there that you can try. So I would say, you know, don't waste your time in with the pride stuff. Oh, I got to be successful. Oh, you know, like, Find somebody you can model and then do what they've done and, and keep doing it. So, like I said, this whole thing is about making sure that you're not operating from pride versus like just do something you're good at that you can actually or that you're already good at that you can actually 10, 10 exit very quickly and a lot faster because you're good at it. And, um, that's pretty much my story. So I hope this helped you guys. Probably provided a lot of clarification 
for you guys on why I quit doing pallets. Why, you know, why did I actually quit it? And I want to say this again and make sure you guys understand this, that the pallet industry is a great industry. And I think it's highly scalable and not many people have done it professionally. Some people do it like on a mediocre level, but you got to, when you do that business, you got to do it professionally. You got to differentiate yourself from <clears throat> these local, these local unprofessional guys that like, you know, they don't pick up their phone. There's no customer service. You know, there's no, there's no professionalism, right? These companies don't deal with a lot of professional people. So if you could just go in there and just be professional, you can win. And that's exactly what I did in the DTS business. I went in there and I just was professional about it. Answer the phone, don't be an asshole, and provide great customer service all the time. That's simple. <coughs> so that's my story, guys. I hope you learned something and I hope you guys got something from this. See you later.